This is a review and tutorial about the Horde add-on, which you can get on the Blender Market. This add-on can help you create crowds of people, zombies and so on, right inside Blender. In this video I'll show you how to use the add-on, and I'll also cover how to create crowds with your own custom characters, instead of the default ones that the add-on provides. Now let's take a look at the add-on. If I go to my downloads, currently I can see two zip files. One is for Blender 3.2 and it also works for 3.3. The other one is for 3.4 and up. I have 3.5, so that's what I'm going to download. The add-on and the assets are all zipped together. You can keep the file zipped, go to Blender, Edit Preferences, Add-ons, Install, find your zip file and install it. Activate it, and then Horde will be here in the end panel. So let's see how it works. Under Folder, you have four types of humans. Humans dressed in suits, swimsuits, bear zombies, and clothed zombies. And that just determines the look of your crowd. But regardless of the look, you have three types of behavior. Idle crowd, running crowd, and walking crowd. And you can add them all in the same way. Just select the preset and press the Add GN System button. And that will create a NURBS path and it will automatically select the Draw tool. If I want to draw on a surface, I can click on Surface and for some reason it will exit Edit Mode. I think that's just a Blender quirk. So I just have to go back to Edit Mode and now I'll be in Surface Mode and I can draw on my surface. And that will create a crowd. To tweak the parameters, I can go to object mode, select my crowd, and I can go here to the modifier tab, but I can also press the sync parameters button. And that will give me the main parameters here in the add-on interface. So I can select the ground plane, and then press the populate on target button, and that will place the humans on the ground. Uh, and that is very robust, I can move the ground any way I like, and the crowd will always stay on the ground. If I scale it down, you'll see how it contracts. The controls are fairly intuitive. The first three controls control the density of the crowd. I like the performance of this add-on. With this kind of dense crowd, the frame rate will drop a little bit, but it's still responsive. And the other two parameters control the spacing and randomization of the crowd. And that's about it. So let's delete this and try a running crowd. Again, same thing. Press the button and draw a line. And you can draw two lines as well, by the way. If I go back to edit mode and draw another crowd, I'll have two sets of crowds inside the same system. Again, I can set the ground object, sync my parameters, and press snap to ground. And that will make sure that the crowd stays on the ground. So here we can control the number of people in the crowd, their speed. Offset can offset the animation, so you can make it start earlier. Spread will spread out or contract the crowd. These options are really cool. Randomize path. If you increase it, you'll see how the end of the splines gets random. And then with random scale, you can, you can control the size of the noise pattern. Generally, lower values will be smoother and higher values will get more distorted. And this curve here is really cool. Basically, high values on this curve means a lot of randomness and low values means no randomness. So that is why these paths start here in one point and then they spread out and become random. If I tweak this point here, you'll see that the beginning starts getting random and in the middle we have less randomness. And that can be very useful if your crowd needs to go through a passage and then spread out, you can control this kind of behavior with this curve. And the walking crowd basically works the same way. Um, let's try the zombies and make them walk. Same thing, just draw a line and the zombies will be walking. 
and you have the same options as for the running crowd. I'm sure a lot of you will want to use your own custom models for the crowds, and I'm going to show you how to do it. First, I want to show you how to prepare your animated models. I know many of you will be using Miximo, so that's why I also got some models from Miximo, but you can use any rigged model that you like. So here I have two models that have walking animations. So I'll demonstrate on a walking animation, but any animation will work in the same way. Right now they're overlapping. I can just select one of them and uh, move it to the side. That's okay. And now we have several problems. First of all, the armatures and the meshes have unapplied scale and rotation, and that is not good. And the other problem is that if I play the animation, it will stop after one cycle, but we want it to cycle forever. And one final problem is that, for example, this model consists of multiple meshes. So to fix the rotation, just select everything and press Ctrl A and choose rotation. Apply rotation, all rotation will be applied and that won't be a problem. Now, if you apply the scale in the same way, you'll see that the animation of this model was completely whacked. So let's undo. So this is a very common problem and to solve it, you can use Game Rig Tools. This is an add-on by CG Dive, and it is pay what you want, so you can download it for free as well. On Game Rig Tools, use the Apply Armature Scale function, and with these settings, you can press OK. And now, if you check your scale, everything will be applied, and your animation will be intact. Now, to fix the looping, it's very easy. Select one of the armatures, switch to Graph Editor, Press A to select everything, press F3 and type cycles and choose this option and that will make the animation cycle. And you have to do the exact same thing for all armatures that you have. Just make them cycle. Okay, and now the final problem that we have is with this model that consists of multiple meshes. Just select one of the meshes and then box select over everything else. Do not select any of the other characters and press Ctrl J. And this is what you need. You have to have only one mesh per character and your animations need to loop. Otherwise your crowd will start sliding after one walk cycle. Oh, and make sure that your walking and running animations are animated in place like here. If your characters move forward in space as they walk, that is a problem and you have to fix it. Miximo in particular has this in-place option for walks, so check it before you download your animations. And it's also a good idea to have your models in real-world size, so if you select your mesh and check the dimensions here, you can see if your character has the proper scale. You may want to save this file. Now I'm going to cover creating custom characters for the Horde add-on. This add-on does not have a dedicated workflow for custom characters, but it can be done and it's not difficult. Now I'm going to select all of my characters and armatures and press Ctrl C and then I'll go to a new Blender scene, delete this cube, let's create a new collection and call it my characters. And with this collection selected, press Ctrl V and that will paste the characters. You can also append them if you like. Now I'm going to select the main collection here and go to the Horde add-on. I'm going to select a walking crowd and press the Add button. It's the first time I noticed, but the humans for Horde are quite big, so we can scale them down in object mode, I think. And then in edit mode, I'm going to tweak this curve a little bit. Okay, now to substitute these default humans with my humans, I just have to go to the modifiers and switch the character instances collection to my characters. Blender treats armature objects as other objects, so you'll have some of the characters as armatures. To fix this, create a new collection, call it armatures or whatever, and drag and drop the armature objects from my characters to the armatures collection. So now only the meshes will be instantiated. And just like that we have custom characters. I can hide the my characters collection in the armatures and there we go. 
custom characters for Horde. And of course, for running or for idling, you'll have to use the appropriate animations. This is all you need to know about Horde. If you're interested in the add-on, you'll find a link to it in the video description. If this video has been useful, please give it a like and subscribe with the all option to get notified when I release new Blender tutorials, reviews and so on.